you are Rachel Lamb, and you're from Hedera Hashgraph. Okay. Who, and that's a company that is extremely influential already in our young space because you're making a difference for a lot of people. And you particularly have done a great job at our conference in helping people understand what you do. And you're a big part of that company making a difference in the world. And so I appreciate that. And so I just like talking about stuff like that. Don't you? Okay. Yeah, you do. <laughs> that was a lot for me, I see that. Right? So, okay, so for people who don't totally get it, what, how would you describe Hedera Hashgraph? Um, okay, so Hedera Hashgraph is a distributed ledger technology. Yeah. So the common, the most commonly known version is a blockchain. Right. Uh, we are, we do what a blockchain does, but we are not a blockchain. Right. Um, so, just simply put, I right. like to look at the era as two parts. We're a performant distributed network. Yeah. And then we're also a mature governance. On the network side, we prioritize three features. Three features. All three. <laughs> three features. We're fast, fair, and secure. Fast, fair, and secure. Yeah, three fast, great things. Fast, fair, secure. Um, and then on the governance side, we want to be open and we want to be stable. Wow. So things that are fast, fair, secure, open, and stable, yeah. all five of those are I amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I can go into more detail, but maybe for, maybe for another day. Okay, but so you make things fast, fair, secure, open, and stable. Yeah, those are, those are great things. Those are amazing. That's right. And so you do it without really using a blockchain, and some of the vagaries that blockchains create, you guys solve for. Well, actually, it's, we don't use blockchain because we're, we're a slightly different architecture. Right. Um, it's, it's called a DAG, Directed Acyclic Wrap. Yep. It's just structurally a little, a little different. Right, and it creates certain um, advantages. Fast, fair, secure. There it is. <laughs> okay, so how did you personally get involved in this crazy space? Uh, well, it actually started with a healthcare problem. Okay. And uh, what I was wondering was whether it was possible for people to own their own information, whether it's like blood or genetics right. or health records, something as simple as your x-rays anywhere in the world if you want to travel. And there are some apps that actually do that, not, not the apps, just normal apps right. that are digitizing some of that now, but it's actually still um, not very common. Right. So when I stumbled across Ethereum, it was, uh, it was, it was a, a potential solution to this problem of, of uh, data sovereignty, and in this particular case, health data. Right. That's how I got, that's how I got so, kind okay, of into you're, this rabbit hole. So you were already fascinated with the, the question of sovereignty over our own health data. That's, a, that's an area that, not just health, but you know, trying to create some sort of reward for our sharing of our data, that's like a giant hope that, pe that we conquer in this area, right? Yes. So um, that for you was health. That was your sort of passion. And you, you came, how'd you come across Ethereum? I uh, just read about it? Just yeah, some friends of mine. There's some friends okay. of mine were really into it. So. Oh, cool, yeah. yeah. A lot of us found it that way. Some yeah. crazy dude is like, there's this stuff. Good, good friends. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. And so so you were into the finding a way to solve the problem of sovereignty of our data. You end up with Hedera. And what do you think is the promise of having Hedera Hashgraph in the world? So the question of what can Hedera do is really a question of what is a distributed ledger supposed to do? Okay. So it depends on what you want to do. Yeah. What Hedera can help you achieve depends on your industry and what your goals are. Absolutely. From the data side, whether it's healthcare or identity, it can help you create a system where uh, the data is self-sovereign, as we had discussed earlier, yeah. uh, can be more efficiently transferred and uh, attested between parties. Say your physician might want to say, you know, I have checked a you know, do a checkup two weeks ago and here are the results and they're accurate. Yeah. Or, you know, I was sick, he didn't fake sick to go to not to go to work. <laughs> right. Um, but on the identity side, it could be you are a citizen of the United States or um, you did graduate from, you know, some ex-college or mm -hmm. you have Y certification. Um, so that can be very interesting and very efficient. Yeah, there are a lot of applications for ID on the blockchain. Right, right. something I think that about even like with the refugee crisis, even where people were trying to figure out who's who and what's what. And there are a... such incredible applications that could come out of DLT to solve yeah. that problem. 
actually a good friend of mine who's working on that. Oh, cool. Shout out to Lucia Gallardo. Okay. Lucia Gallardo. There you go. Check in. <laughs> Uh, working with a company called Emerge, it's her company, and she's building a solution for uh, identity to help relocate refugees. There you go. Yeah, very, very good. But what, what you... excites me the most about distributed ledgers for capital markets yes. is the fact that here is an industry that has really built the modern world. You know, Western civilization is, you know, a large part due to the, like the growth of capital markets. Absolutely. And yet, we have this industry that is quite opaque in many ways, mm -hmm. and just very recently caused um, a little fuss in 2008. <laughs> a little fuss. It, it hurt a oh little. My goodness. It hurt a little. Um, and you know, you can say it was because some of the transactions, some of the instruments that are traded on this market are, are just a little one-sided. Mm -hmm. uh, there's lots that we don't understand about what we're buying and selling. Mm -hmm. And something that tokenizing a security uh, can, can help do is to add a little bit of transparency to that. Yeah. And to give investors real-time information on, you know, talk about uh, something like a mortgage-backed security. Real-time information on whether or not some of these bundles, the pieces within them, are being paid on time. So is the instrument that you bought, uh, the risk at which it was assessed, is that accurate yeah. uh, to what's happening in reality? Right. And Think so, of how different it would have been. Uh, well, I, I don't know. Hopefully, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, absolutely. We're, they, they're carving things up and taking the cream off the top and repackaging all the crap and handing it off with the same rating. If you had the transparency into exactly as you're saying, what are the payment repayment rates? You wouldn't care what the rating is, you'd just see the actual data. Right, so what excites me the most and why I love what you're doing here with Security Token Academy so much is um, we could potentially do something that can make this market just a little more fair. I love it, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. It's great to have you. We hope to have you back again. Give us an update on what's happening with you and Hedera. Can you come back? Thank you so much. All right, thank you.